Did you get your neck ex exercises in there? Ready. We're ready. It's time to talk about those big guys, the sinners. Gotta love some big men. Mr. Nanko. I wish George Mirasan was still on this list. Ah. Love gorgeous George. That's Nanko here, good. Dustin there. Here's the thing, looking at the other videos, check out the cheat sheet, go onto the website, and please thumb up, subscribe, subscribe, and leave a nice comment. We're in the DC area and George still makes appearances on local TV and he some does. of the commercials. If you remember gorgeous George, let us know. The one Pete, have you seen the pizza one? Oh, with the double slice? Oh, it's fantastic. It's great. Makes me laugh every time. <laughs> Tier one, Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, we all liked him coming into last year, but very few people saw this coming. And me saying that, then I'm sure we'll get some comments. I saw it coming. I knew. Oh, I knew he was going to average good. 18, 10, and two blocks. Sure you did. <laughs> Amazing year. Another thing I like, he played 82 games. You got to love that. I mean, he's, he's our number one center in our opinion. And then Whiteside. It's simple with him, you know, it's a little worrisome with his health, but I, I, you know, he did play 73 games last year, so I'm excited about that. You know, normally the bigger guys, like, you know, real big guys like him, I worry about like feet and those type of injuries, but almost four blocks a game. Ooh. I mean, that, <laughs> that's what you're getting Whiteside for, that and his 12 rebounds. All right, so moving to tier two, Brooke Lopez is the first guy I want to highlight. And if Lopez stays healthy, he is a monster. He's like a 20 and eight guy, but He's been in and out of the lineup, banged up, so you, we have to rank him here. He said relatively healthy last year, 73 games. So if he can do it again, especially on Brooklyn, who else can put the ball in the hoop? Sorry, Brooklyn fans, your team's awful. <laughs> All right, and the next thing I want to talk about is Paul Gasol. I really like the move to San Antonio. The thing that I like about him is that last year he was like almost 17 points, 11 rebounds, two blocks. And I know he's getting older, but Paul Gasol never relied on his amazing leaping ability and quickness to be good. He was always just a crafty vet type player, and now he's just a crafty vet. Isn't it Pal? Is it Pal, Pal Gasol? Pal Gasol. What am I saying, Paul? You're throwing an L in there. Yeah, you know what? You, you've been in America long enough to throw an L in there. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else has an L. Sorry, our fans overseas. You, you forgot the L in your name, sorry. <laughs> That's actually Paul. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Talk about DeAndre Jordan. That's awful by me. It's so bad. <laughs> Andre Drummond. Here's the deal with those two guys. If you don't, if your league does not count free throw percentage, I like these guys even higher oh, than yeah. what we have because I mean that's really yeah, they're the borderline only, tier one. That's really the only place they hurt you. I mean, so it all it does depend a little bit on your on your league settings. I mean, obviously they're not going to get that many assists but they do get steals and they get blocks they don't turn the ball over much they have a good field goal percentage there's a lot to like but oh if it counts free throw percentage they mm. will kill you <laughs> in that category all right tier four talking about gobert first for utah he you know was a borderline first rounder last year didn't live up to that but already early in the preseason he is gobbling up a ton of rebounds I'm starting to kind of like him a little bit, but we have him ranked here accordingly, so I need to be disciplined in the draft, so so do you. And then again, I want to talk about is Greg Monroe. I mean, again, talking about the Bucks all the time. I love the Bucks apparently. But the thing about Greg Monroe <laughs> that I want to keep in mind is that after they signed him to the deal, it feels like they've been trying to move him ever since, and I think this might be the year that they actually move him and make way for even younger guys, which is crazy because the Bucks are such a young team. But if he stays there, don't hate too much. The stats weren't that bad last year. 15.3 points, 8.8 .8 boards a game. And, you know, the only bad thing is he didn't get over a block, which you should out of your center position, obviously. An exciting young player out with Indiana, Miles Turner. I mean, this is this guy is going to be on everyone's list. Huge upside. But be careful not to overly fall in love. I mean, this guy will almost certainly improve on his 10 and 5 and a half with 1 and a half blocks from a year ago. But I don't think he's going to jump to, like, 18 and 10. Like I, I think there's it's somewhere in between 18 and 10 and what he did last year. So don't go crazy over him. But yes, get excited about him. But he will probably get drafted two rounds before he should. Valen is kind of the same deal. I mean, he's been overdrafted pretty much ever since he broke out because everyone just he has stretches that are so good, but then he has stretches that are so bad. <laughs> and at the end of the year, you know what he does? He averages about 12 and 9, <laughs> and that's what you're gonna get out of him. 
Tier six talked about one guy and that's Steven Adams. And the thing about Adams, I think with Kevin Durant leaving, that helps him. But I think what helps him the most is the confidence he got in the playoffs and the confidence OKC's ha OKC has him after the playoffs. They were feeding him down low and he was really hard to stop. I think his point total goes up and you're still gonna get those dirty hustle stats, the, the crazy rebounds, the steals, he's gonna get blocks here and there. I, I think he has a kind of a nice ceiling this year. Double-double guy. Another guy that, that I'm, I'm high on tier seven is Mason Plumley. He's got a clear path to minutes. I like that. He played 82 games last year. I like that from a big man. I think he's gonna be right around 10 points. I think he can get close to 10 boards. He gets a steal, he gets a block. I mean, you just where you're getting him in the draft and what you're looking for, just a guy that can stay out on the court and get you some decent stats. I think he's a, a very interesting late round target to, to look at in your drafts. The one off season move that people are not talking nearly <laughs> enough about. The true reason Golden State's going over the top this year. Oh yeah. Is my boy. Zaza. Uh, I have, get a ring on I have always, always loved Zaza. I think he's good. He's always been solid. When he gets minutes, he produces. Last year, he produced with he had 9.4 boards a game, 8.6 points. So they're probably not going to ask him to score at all on that team. But buyer beware, obviously, they're going to go to the small ball. I'm just kind of kidding around. I do love Zaza. But I think in the late, late round of dress, I think he will have some value this year. He loves Zaza. I do love Zaza. When he was him. in my wedding, I got gifts for yes. all the groomsmen. I still have it. PSA 10 autograph uh, it's, rookie. It's a money Zaza. card. It's, it's still got, it's in my office right now, actually. PSA 10, it's a pretty sweet card. It was a good gift. <laughs> so, so I love our, Zaza. Our center tiers and rankings. Check out all our other videos. <laughs> How random is that? I don't even know where that came from. What? Zaza love. Started in fantasy basketball, obviously. It always, ooh. Money! Oh, Pen flip, Dustin. Ooh, that was a solid pen flip, too. Every time.